same thing with nuts and seeds. In all these studies, these large-scale studies on large numbers of people looking at hard endpoints, we show that when we use these large-scale studies over time, that people who eat more nuts and seeds, more regular consumption of nuts and seeds, have increased lifespan and decreased all-cause mortality. Lower rates of heart attack, lower rates of stroke, and lower rates of cancer. Dramatically, in the physician's health study, there was a 60% lower risk of sudden cardiac death in those physicians eating nuts and seeds three or more times a week. Look at the Adventist health study for a minute. Well, here's a study that has a meta-analysis of 25 trials on nuts and seeds showing that they lowered cholesterol, and the more you ate, the more it dropped LDL cholesterol. Because nuts and seeds have sterols and stanols, particular fibers, that bind cholesterol and bind fat. And when you eat these high-fat foods, the fibers that contain and the sterols and stanols that are holding onto those fat pass through you into the toilet bowl, sucking the fat, some of that fat out that passes through you so all their fat calories are not biologically accessible. So you felt like you ate the 200 calories, it ratcheted down your appetite by 200 calories, but only 150 calories came in. They naturally and comfortably made you calorically strict. The fat that's now passed through into the toilet bowl was not the fat that was in the nuts and seeds to begin with. Because the fat that's now in the toilet bowl is fat that the that these fat magnet in the nuts and seeds sucked out of the bloodstream. Because things pass from the digestive tract into the bloodstream, and things pass through the villi from the bloodstream back into the digestive tract. And nuts and seeds have the ability to suck out cholesterol, particularly oxidized LDL, which is the most dangerous type of cholesterol. It puts more bad fats into the stool. So what I'm saying here is that the Seventh-day Adventist study, first published in 2001, showed that longest life was in vegans who ate nuts and seeds regularly, and the flexitarians, those people who ate animal products, who ate some nuts and seeds, lived longer than the vegans not eating nuts and seeds. Did you follow that one? Now that was in 2001, a large-scale study, but in 2018, a new Seventh-day Adventist study came out. The Seventh-day Adventist study, Health Study 2, came out. 17 years later, larger numbers of people followed for more years, showing that when they divided nut and seed intake into five different quintiles, comparing the highest quintile of nut and seed consumption to the lowest, showed a 39% decreased risk of cardiovascular death in the highest quintile of nuts and seeds consumption. It was funny because I heard, I saw on the internet the other day, some guy was spouting off something about nuts and not being protective, and he was saying that, um, that these studies can't be counted on because the nut company funded some of the research, or gave a grant or something. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I know that they were, the nut and seed companies were going around shooting all these people or causing people to die because they weren't eating nuts and seeds. I don't know what he's talking about here. First of all, there's a large number of researchers involved with in these projects. They're peer-reviewed. They track variables, variables for conflicting effects. And they also are, are make sure that there's no conflict of interest. And just because if not, uh, there's some nut and seed company some nut company funded some of the studies or some of the researchers doesn't invalidate these dramatic results we found. These results are cumulative, progressive, and hold up in every study, even the ones that have no grant from the nut and seed company and the ones that do. Show the same exact thing, and that's dramatic protection against all cause mortality. Do you follow that? You can't argue that these studies show meat is dangerous. And when they're studying not eating nuts is dangerous, we don't like that part of the study. Throw that part out. Just accept the part that meat is dangerous. We don't want the part that not eating nuts is dangerous. This is unbelievably crazy people, right? You have crazy people wanting to justify the way they want to eat or their, pro their prior prognosis or their favorite nutritional guru or their, these nutritional gurus who, who put out some ideas or, or dietary protocols that have been proven wrong over the years don't want to give up the fact that their diets have been proven wrong and they hurt people, and they cause people to die. And somebody has to fight against that, to stand up for that. It's irresponsible, it's, and it's, right? It's not, and we have to be conservative and responsible and careful in our advice, particularly with vegans who can get fat deficient and shrinkage of the brain from DHA deficiency. We don't want to cause damage in people. And, do, and give them bad advice, even if it hurts a small percent of them. 
We don't want to hurt five per, damage 5% five of people if we didn't have to. The meta-analysis means the com combination of all the analysis of, diet, of studies looking at this issue show that one serving of nuts and seeds a day on the average have showed the same thing as Adventist Health Study 2 was a dramatic decrease in all causes of death, about 40% reduction in cardiovascular mortality. Same things. Each one of these studies? Wow. Oh, all these studies show similar things. I, I, if I look down, I get very loud. I got it. More green vegetables, more beans, more nuts and seeds means you're lowering the glycemic effect of your diet because you're including more calories in a lower glycemic. Did you follow that? Lowering the glucose parameters, accelerating your weight loss, decreasing the amount of calories you need to feel like eating, and making eating less calories more comfortable. I can't make you eat less food. I can't make you eat the right amount of food. That's up to you. I can only tell you this, that when your diet is well designed, then eating less will no longer be uncomfortable. You won't desire, this will make you less desirous of overeating. You'll be comfortable and you won't have to overeat. Now I know most of your life, you've been trained to overeat. You've practiced overeating. It's been socially acceptable. You've used food recreationally to stuff yourself and it's hard for you to stop overeating. If you're overweight and you're not losing at least two pounds, a week or a pound every three days, you're not on the right diet. And you're not following a nutritarian diet, my advice, if you're not losing weight. If you're following my advice, a nutritarian diet, then you're either at a favorable weight or you're losing weight at about a pound every three days. One of those two things. You got that? While you're overweight and losing weight, you're getting much, much healthier even before your weight is all lost. Because just losing weight at that rate is stopping estrogen production from the fat cell and it's starting to lower insulin resistance and prevent angiogenesis production. You're dramatically reducing your risk of cancer just from being on the diet even when you're still overweight because you're losing weight. Did you follow that one? You've got to be moving there or you've got to be there. But don't be stuck with your head in the mud. The secret formula for obesity, if you want to really get fat, is 2S plus O. You know what that means, right? Sugar, salt, and oil. Salt makes you eat more calories. Increases your appetite stat. So does oil. So does sweeteners. It makes you into a monster. A calorie-consuming monster that can't be controlled. The Nutritarian Pyramid has vegetables at the base. Of all types, of all colors, particularly green vegetables. But all those vegetables, and beans, and nuts, a nutritarian goes for a variety of high-nutrient plants. But we avoid empty calorie foods. Go back. You want to see the pyramid again? Is that it? i got to hurry up here. I've only got like 15 minutes left. The food pyramid has beans, and fruits, and nuts, and whole grain, and tack grains. We're trying to tell people to not eat processed foods and either take the animal products out, or in very tiny amounts, less than 5% of total calories. A nutritarian doesn't eat processed foods and sugars and sweeteners and honey and maple syrup. We don't use white flour and donuts and cookies and rice cakes and breakfast bars and chips and soft drinks and cold cereals and soda and junk food. Why? Why would we put poisons? You can get 10 men to tie me down to a chair and to force that down my throat. Like why not, it's like the same as trying to shoot me up with heroin. 